Hello everybody and welcome to this video where I am going to give you some bad advice that you probably shouldn't take but if you took it you know I have been um, just kind of having a lot of thoughts about things a lot of thoughts about how I do my channel here um, how I uh, do the stuff that I do and what things I can do different in the upcoming year to make them better. One of the things I'm going to try to do is curtail this. Make this not say so many horrible things. Back to this being a fucking video. Advice, writing advice, yes. Okay, so the other day I was visiting a friend and the friend was watching an old episode of Modern Family, as you do. In the episode, I don't remember what season it was. It was probably the second. Luke looked pretty young. But the episode title was Phil on a Wire. I watched this and was like instantly, oh my God, this is like not only life advice, but writing advice, publishing advice, the whole fucking thing. And the best bit is, is that it came from fucking Luke. It starts with Phil and Luke watching the documentary, which I believe is called A Man on a Wire or A Man on a Wire. And they were watching the TV and they were just like, oh, like totally like blown away by this documentary. Phil said something like, he's like, Luke, aren't people just awesome? And Luke's like, yeah, awesome. Then, like, Phil's talking about what the movie's about to his little talking head bit where he's like, this guy, like, got to pursue his lifelong dream of tightrope walking. And it made me, like, realize that I, too, can pursue my lifelong dream of tightrope walking. They tried with just him, like, I guess trying to walk in a line or something like that before he went to work. And he was like, okay, like, I made it across four out of five times. Um, when I get home from work, we're getting off the ground. And so he gets off the ground. Um, they go six inches, okay? And he keeps falling. And he keeps falling. And he keeps falling. And he keeps falling. And he's ready to give up. And him and Luke sit down on the stoop, and he's like, I just don't get it. Like, you know, before, like, I was on the ground, I was making it across a bunch of times, you know? Like, I don't get it. And then Luke, brilliant little fucking Luke, says, well, maybe you keep falling because you know you can fall and it won't hurt. So maybe if we put the wire up high enough... To where if you fell, it would really hurt, you wouldn't fall. And Phil's like, oh, my God, you're brilliant. And he was like, let's put it up to seven feet. And um, was just all excited and ready to go, to go up to seven feet. Because this logic made sense to him. And so as the episode's going, the family's all doing other shit. Nobody gives a fuck. And everyone's all mad and shit. And then um, they come, everyone comes home at the exact moment that Phil is halfway across the wire. It's seven feet. And they all start cheering for him, hoping he can make it. And they're all excited. And you know what he does? He fucking makes it. Caveats. I understand this is a fucking sitcom, and they need to solve problems in less than 30 minutes. I completely understand this. But I did, like, I remember saying not too long ago that I think the thing that keeps a lot of writers from being successful is that they have too much of a parachute. You know, they either have somebody supporting them or they have a great job or they they're just comfortable. So there's no risk. There's no like 
detriment in trying, you know? And since there's nothing forcing them to do this and make it work, it's very meh, you know? Now, I do not think that all of you should go out and quit your job and, like, fuck off your family and, like, just go become a writer in some weird little room somewhere. But I am saying that this might be how it worked for me, you know? But, again, I've been doing stuff kind of like this for fucking years and years and years. But it's like, when I first started my own creative business, it was, again, a music business, I kind of didn't have another way to go. It was like, I was doing this, so here I am doing this. And when things got fucked, I would pick up little side jobs every once in a while. I, I don't do well with authority, so every job I ever had, I only had for a little bit of time before they asked me very nicely to leave and never come back, or I would say horrible things with the film business I was doing. That was a little bit easier because I was getting paid a lot more to struggle, if that makes sense. Like, I would get paid enough money to keep me going for three or four months for every project I was doing. Sometimes more than that. But, like, sometimes I would be working back to back to back, and so that money um, stacked, which was great. And then when I finally left that world and went to books and writing books and ebooks and shit like that, that's when it was like, because I had been out of the like workforce at that point for like basically 12 years and I didn't know how to go back to it. It didn't make any sense to me. And so when I moved to writing books, I was like, okay, I have to do this and I have to do it like good or else I'm fucked. And I was raising a kid and I was like, I can't, I, I can't fail. Like, I have to fucking do the thing. I was seven feet in the air on the tightrope. You know what I'm saying? And I knew falling would hurt. So I didn't fall. I just kept fucking going and kept going and kept going and kept going and kept going. And kept going. I do think a lot of things that hold people back is the idea that they can fail and nothing will hurt them if they fail. You know, like there, there's no real consequences for failure. And I'm not saying this is a good idea, but I'm just putting this out there in case, like, let's say you get laid off this week. It's Christmas. Why the fuck? Why the fuck not? Why wouldn't you get laid off on the week of Christmas? Fuck me. Oh, and then if like the new year rolls around and you're out of work, think about it. Think if I bust my ass right now. Can I fucking do this? If I fucking type fucking hard and I type fucking fast and I type fucking daily and I type fucking drunk, can I fucking pull this off? Can I fucking do this thing? And if you have that in you, chances are you can. But doubt's got to take a fucking back seat in someone else's car because you can't be dealing with that shit. It was just a really nice bit of advice that is scary as shit, and I don't recommend everyone do, but if you feel like your life coddles you to the point where like failure is okay because you have all this other stuff to lean on, um, I don't know. Like Keep that in your back pocket, and if you ever run out of that stuff to lean on, maybe it's time for you to fucking put the wire up. You know what I'm saying? So keep buying my books, everybody. MacArthur Park, out now at my Etsy shop. End of everything. You can pick it up on Amazon as an ebook, And you could also get Fingering the Mundane, which is around here somewhere. 
and you can get all my other chat books. Make sure you join the fucking Anarchy Crew so you could do over a hundred workshops and lessons with me and kick ass and be in the next or the next next um, Poetic Anarchy um, anthology book. So until then, guys, type hard, do the thing, and I will talk to you all later. I just want to give a quick thanks to those people who make these videos possible. Anarchy Crew and my followers on Patreon, I appreciate the hell out of you guys. And thank you so much for keeping me going to keep this content possible. You guys are awesome. And if you'd like to join the crew or the Anarchy Crew, just hit the join button beneath this video. And if you'd like to become a member of my Patreon, you can run over to the link down below to do that as well. Thank you.